Hey everyone, in this tutorial I will teach you how to make this cool wavy audio visualizer in Blender. As always, it is going to be uh, quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so let's start off by deleting the default light, so press X to delete, then select the cube, and we're going to turn this cube into a sphere by adding some uh, subdivisions, and then applying the modifier, and then press tab for edit mode, and then press Alt, Shift, S, then 1 to turn it into a perfect sphere. And by doing this, we avoid the lines that we get with the UV sphere. And then we can add some smooth shading as well. And then next, we're going to add the dynamic paint physics to the sphere and turn this into a brush. So add brush. And then next, we're going to add the plane that we're going to add the waves to. So I press Shift A, add a plane, press S to scale, and then press Tab for edit mode, right click to subdivide, and then I'm going to add around 100 cuts. And then we can go back to object mode, and then make this a canvas for the dynamic paint physics. Now, before we bake, we of course need to add the music. So first I'm going to add it to the file. So go to add, and then sound. And then I'm just going to add some uh, nice copyright free music from Lakey Inspired. And then add sound. And then I'm going to set the end frame to the length of the uh, sound. So 4659 in this case. And then set the end frame for the whole animation to that number as well. And then we need to change the surface type to waves so that we get the waves when the sphere hits the plane. And then in order to be able to bake, we need to save the project. So just give the project a name and you can save it where we want on the computer. And then next we need to select the sphere and add a keyframe so that we can bake the sound to the location. So press I to keyframe and then go into the graph editor and hide the Y and X location for the object transformation so that we only animate it on the Z axis. Then select the uh, Z axis or the set location and bake the uh, sound to F curves. So that the uh, animation on the Z axis matches the music. And we're going to use the whole spectrum of uh, frequencies. As for the music, I'm just going to use some uh, copyright free Lakey inspired music. Okay. And then we can uh, play it to uh, see what it looks like. And as you can see, it uh, matches the music. So as you can see, these uh, wave visualizations are very easy to set up, so you can easily add multiple balls with uh, different frequency intervals and so on to get some interesting results. But uh, for this tutorial, I'm just going to add one. And I think I'm going to move the plane a bit on the z-axis, so G then set to grab it on the z-axis, and uh, S to uh, scale. Now, before we bake, let's uh, just make sure to go to the first frame and then press Ctrl Shift S to create another save. We can also enable open borders so that the waves do not splash back and then uh, bake the uh, simulation. Okay, so this is what it looks like and right now it looks kind of low poly. So we're going to fix that by uh, First, enabling smooth shading, and then going into the modifiers to add the subdivision surface modifier. Okay, so uh, smooth shading. And then we can add the uh, subdivision surface modifier. And as you can see, the waves are now much smoother.
Now, before we get into the uh, light settings and so on, I'm just going to adjust the uh, location of the plane a little bit on the z-axis. I'm going to move it a bit downwards and then create another save. And then, of course, bake the uh, simulation once again. But uh, this part is, of course, optional. And then once the uh, new bake is uh, done, we have the waves. And in my opinion, they look a uh, lot better than in the previous bake. So I'm going to keep it uh, this way. But we can also improve this uh, exact bake by adding some subdivisions to the plane so that we get more details. So I'm just going to create another save and then press tab for edit mode, then right click and uh, subdivide. And then we can uh, subdivide again. If you want even more details, then delete the bake and then bake again. This time the bake is going to take a lot longer because there are much more details to calculate. But once it's done, it's going to look a lot better as you can see with way more details for the waves, which of course looks better in the final animation. Okay, so now that we have the dynamic paint waves, we can add a background image to add some uh, proper lighting. So uh, let's go to environment texture, open, and then you can download an HDRI from uh, one of these sites. I'm going to use the factory catwalk HDRI. And you can find a, a lot of different HDRIs on HDRI Haven as well. And then open the HDRI. And then we can switch to rendered view to uh, see it. And I'm going to increase the number of samples to increase the quality of the render. I'm also going to turn on screen space reflections and change the material of the plane to uh, a uh, glossy material. Which I think looks nice with the reflections. And then next we can uh, select the uh, sphere. And I'm going to add a glossy shader to this one as well. At this point, we're pretty much done with the scene, but uh, we can still make some tiny adjustments if we uh, feel like it. So uh, for example, I'm going to play around with the uh, roughness, color, and the intensity of the uh, background image. Let me just create one more save. And then going to set the uh, strength of the background image to around 1.5, which I think looks nice. And then next, we can set up the uh, camera. So uh, to uh, set the camera to the current view, you just press Control Alt Numpad 0. And then I'm going to make the background completely transparent and uh, lock the camera to view so that the camera follows your perspective. Okay, so at this point, we're almost done with the tutorial, but as you can see, the uh, bake is gone for some reason. So I just need to uh, bake it again. So I'm going to go into the physics settings and uh, delete the bake and then bake again. And then once the uh, bake is uh, done, we can go into the output settings and uh, set up the uh, render settings. Okay, so uh, I'm going to set the dimensions to 200, which means 4K. You can leave it at 100 if you want 1080p for the animation. And then uh, I'm going to select an output folder, which is where the rendered images are saved. And then you can later put them together into an animation and add the sound. 
OK, and then accept. And then I'm going to set the compression to 90% to save some space. Go to render, and then render animation. 